I'm just going to try and paint a, a little flower that I have the same color as this slip dress, or close to. So we made up a color, and it's kind of a greenish blue, but we, in order to get the, the vibrance, we had to add silver into it, so we did. And I think the color actually matches pretty good. It's probably hard to see with the light, but yeah. just, uh, <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Of, anyhow, we'll see. So we're going to paint this corsage that color. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little too candy bluish for me. I'm going to do these solid ones first. I'm going to have to put it on something, but yeah. Good color though. I like it. Oh, I love it. I'm going to like this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm finally going to get around to... Oh, hi, Rusty. How are you? You want to say hi to everybody? Yeah. I think I'm going to get around to uh, fixing these for Heather, tightening up the straps a little bit. They needed to come in about half an inch, so I'm going to undo this piece right here, and we'll see how we make out, and I'm going to try to be able to disconnect in between the, the pieces of uh, material here, and be able to actually reconnect it and bring it in and uh, shorten these. So all I did here is I just took this stitch ripper, and I stuck it in here, right in here, and then I cut it apart, took the stitches out, and look, guys, there, comes right out in between two layers of materials. So now I can actually cut it. I'm going to bring it, because it goes in about a quarter of an inch, I'm going, and I need to take a half of an inch, I have to bring it in a half of an inch, so basically I'll measure over three quarters of an inch, and then I'll just reinsert it, and I'll clamp it and glue it. And I'll do the same thing with the other side. And magically, you will have these straps that were loose all of a sudden coming in. And they should be perfect on Heather's feet. <laughs> right, Heather? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, David. That's I'm just going to tone those down a little bit. I want to keep this sparkle, but it's kind of That's beautiful, Heather. It a bit. Isn't that amazing? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Just to kind of do something simple. And I love these little uh, feathers coming off of it. So, so this is going to be a little corsage type? Yeah, just it, it has already has a little clip on it. I could add a little uh, brooch pin to it, though, which I probably will. <laughs> and you can even add, you know, you could add more lace and kind of zhuzh it up a bit more. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> like these are quick, easy, fun projects that oh, anyone yeah. can do. Yeah. So, and it, wow, we'll show you this on an outfit and how it can really... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of wanted it to match that, that dress. I thought the dress and the shirt would be nice to have a flower or something that would match that. I'm going to just make it a little deeper, darker purple to go with more of the clothing that I have. Sounds great. I'm just going to take off about three quarters of an inch. Maybe a little bit less that I cut off. Alright, so I'm going to take this fabric fusion and I'm just going to insert it right into the opening here and I'm going to squeeze out some glue and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece here and I'm just going to go ahead and slide it in and then I'm going to put a clamp on it and get it all the way in a second and then I'll put a clamp on it and I'll show you what it looks like I uh, just open this up a little bit here, the crack you can see in between there, between the layers of the fabric, uh, to be able to make sure I can get the insert. You can put a little bit of glue on either side of this if you want instead, if it's easier than putting it in the actual hole. Just show you. Just a little bit on both sides. There's some right there. I'll just do the same on the other side, and then I'll just insert it. There, I just, just put a couple clamps on either side. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the other shoe. And let that dry overnight. And then Heather can try them on. So this bag that we created last week, two things that we're going to do, actually three, 
Uh, I'm going to change up the handle. We had suggestions from the viewers about what to possibly make as an exciting handle color. So we're going to do that. The other thing is I wanted to show you is just the final touches. To make this uh, bag functional, work well, uh, I unzipped it here. The edging of the carpet, I'm just going to run a little bit of that fabric fusion glue with a brush. And I'm going to run side to side around the edging. And what that's going to do is it's just going to be able to make sure that any of the hairs from the, from the carpet don't come off over time. So we'll do that. And the other thing, the exciting thing is, so I went ahead and I found a uh, clutch bag uh, that uh, I can insert in here. I'm going to clean this out first. It's a little dirty. And then I'm going to glue in with that fabric fusion glue this clutch bag, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And we are going to uh, have a very functional bag. So this is what I found. It's uh, it was $3. It's a Jordache. Uh, and it fits in nicely in here. And when you, when I glue the back on, this here, it unbuttons, so you can pull it forward. So it's easier to access, so you could be able to get things in. It has another compartment in the back, but just to be able to put your, whatever you want, your belongings in here and cell phone, it would, it just kind of would lock everything in so it wouldn't jiggle around, but it also gives you more room uh, to be able to maybe if you buy something, to be able to put a few items in this before you actually flip it over and zip it back up. I don't want the clutch to come off of the actual bag that's being applied to, so I made sure that I got quite a bit of glue and just kept about maybe three quarters of an inch or a couple centimeters away from the edge. And put an X in between, make sure it's going to stick down well. Okay, I like the way it's centered in this bag, so what I'm going to just do is put some books on it, weigh it down, and then I'll shut it up and we'll finish the outside of the bag. Well, I found a round piece of ceramic that I could actually just set inside and hopefully this will work. I'll just set this down and see if I can... Now yeah, we'll start with the glue on the edge of the fabric. You just want to get an old brush that you don't mind throwing away once the glue is on it. It's, I find they're hard to, to clean. I guess depending on where you live, but I get these little uh, Red Sable brushes here. It's a five pack and it's a dollar twenty-five. It's probably one of the few things <laughs> it's at the dollar store that uh, I've been able to get. I was paying dollar twenty-five for this set of brushes back. I think it was as early as 2012, so it's amazing. The price hasn't gone up at all, but uh, they're great little brushes to do detailing, and um, if you can find them, I know the dollar stores do carry this type of brush, but they're really good for acrylics and watercolors, and I even use them for oils. We have a whole bunch of brushes here. Some are bigger and all. Uh, uh, all different sizes and some of them are older so usually if I need to just find out a, a beat up brush a lot of times when I'm painting beat up brushes are actually the best brushes to use for techniques so you know throwing away your old brushes is probably something you don't want to do but <laughs> like you see all that there the way it's all but um, I do uh, I do have quite a few of them so I can afford to get rid of them once in a while when I use glue on it I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze a little bit of glue I don't need too much, maybe just a pile that size. And I'm just going to run a very thin amount of this, uh, pulling my brush in this direction. And I'm going to come up here, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub it. You probably won't be able to see it, but I'm just giving a really thin layer on the edge, side to side. I love that first. That will make sure that the fibers stick together on the edges. And then we'll get to the handle. Before I throw this brush out, I'm going to just uh, try to take a little bit of dish soap and I'm going to push down and try to see if I can get the glue while it's still wet to break up so I don't have to waste the brush. I would prefer not to throw it out. So a lot of times when you want to clean a brush well, just wipe it out real good. Um, acrylic paint you can just rinse out in soap and water. 
or just in water, sorry, and then just kind of push down and then knock against the edges. But um, to get everything out, it's nice to push up and down into some dish soap. And then you can just take your water and run it over it. And just like that. And let's just see if the sticky came out. Sometimes this works. Sometimes it doesn't at all. So in this case, it feels like it uh, works pretty good. If you ever have some sticky brushes, uh, or the form isn't quite right, uh, or the brushes are a, a little bit dried out, rub them with a little bit of Vaseline, and uh, it's amazing what they what they can do. So I think a few of them were suggesting to pick up a little bit of either the, the deeper red or the the pinks here in the that you see in this bag. So we need a color that's uh, kind of in between the two, but I think it'll match well. And it has silver in it. It's mainly red and silver, and it has a little bit of uh, blue in it. So we'll see how that goes on. Let's get a nice thin coat. And I'll probably do a couple coats on this. Thin coats are really important if you want it to stay on long term. This handle has already been sanded. And the first coats went on. Looking good. There might be some swearing. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a this is a little tough moment here oh, for the. Can't wait to see this upcycled skirt you're doing. <laughs> it's very exciting. The material's so thick it's hard to run through the machine. Yeah. Slow but sure. Slow and steady wins the race. That's what I'm saying. Bob Marley. <laughs> Bunch of heat set. Any of the acrylic paint you put on your clothes, you can put an iron right to it. It's not a problem. I think one of my favorite things in this world is to be able to collaborate. Heather and I are getting so much inspiration from you guys. I believe that everybody has something that can help us uh, uh, move forward and learn and, and, and better ourselves. And so for me, I love sharing these simple ways to be able to upcycle items and collaborate. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you a few projects. One that Heather started and she kind of got stuck on and I came up with an idea so I'm going to show you and uh, she does this a lot with me. She, she finds uh, solutions for me and uh, I never really understood how to be able to have a collaborative program online. I'm hoping that uh, this will build into something very unique. I think it already has uh, where uh, people can voice their ideas uh, online and we can uh, collaborate uh, various projects and, and build on things together. Heather was working on this so probably about a month ago she made these puff sleeves and she actually had to get a, some more fabric from uh, thrifting to be able to actually make the other sleeve but she uh, cropped the shirt. It used to be a lot longer, made it a lot shorter. She's not quite happy with the way it looks right now. And so what I was suggesting was maybe that we want to just kind of get rid of this collar. I think that it competes too much with the this frill that you have below. And I thought we could just pop that in like this and, and get rid of that. And she did like it a, a, a quite a bit better, but she still wasn't quite sold on this piece. So what I thought was, boy, a hot pink down here on the frill, if we paint that, it would really set this shirt off. I think it would just be an amazing combination. So I think what we're going to do is try that. And we can, it's only paint, so we can always change the color. This is the next day, so these have been drying the shoes. It's going to take these little clips off. And we're going to test and see how, how well everything glued up. It's amazing if you use the right glues, glues are stronger than uh, nails um, or screws. It, they really can hold up phenomenal. So this looks awesome. And we're going to just let that uh, 
We'll let Heather be able to try these on. Can't wait to see. That was an easy fix to getting these sh shoes all tightened up so the straps will not be loose straight around her feet anymore. All right, so I have some red, some textile medium, which is that kind of that clear white here, some silver and some white. So white, textile medium, silver, and some red. And I'm just going to mix that up. I'm going to go ahead and try this, see how it goes. So I'll just start at the top here. I'm just going to rub on a very thin layer. So you have to be make sure that you don't get it on the actual blouse here. So I'm careful where I'm putting it. This might not be enough of that real wow factor that I want. Sometimes when you add uh, silver into the red, it kind of fades it down. Just put a few pieces of paper on both sides of the ruffle. That way I don't get it on the shirt. And I can kind of just poke at this real quick. I like easy. I'm not concerned too much with getting the, an exact color on this first layer. I just want to get it on thin. I just hold the paper in place. It goes pretty quick. Not overly happy with this color. I find it's... When you add white into color, you really lose that vibrance. So I might switch to a a higher quality paint for the second layer. You've no sense doing it on the first layer because you kind of want to seal in the fabric first, kind of use it as a primer. So that's what we're doing. So there we are for layer number one. Now there's a little bit of ruffle on the sleeves, the bottom here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom of each sleeve. Okay, we'll just let those uh, sleeves dry. This medicine wheel coat, oh, I just love it. When I got it, I, I knew I wanted to adjust it in some way, shape, or form. There's lettering on the back. I don't want that on here. And I wanted to create my own medicine wheel as the center. What I did is I researched the various nations around the world and what medicine wheel meant to them. I kind of created my own, my own wheels. So I have various thicknesses of canvas and this is, this is a little bit more of a lightweight and I just thought it would be perfect to be able to create the image on. I'm going to prime this white. Uh, and then I'm going to create the image on top of it. I'm just going to go ahead and freehand cut a piece here of the canvas. You have to make sure you have your fabric scissors. I think I might cut a just a little bit of a zigzag edge. I'm going to go a little bit bigger than just in case I, I need to Just the size. We'll see how this fits. So I like the imperfection of this cut. It's not perfectly rectangular. It's curved on the edges. I, I like it because the curve kind of accentuates the, the feather down here. I think it's a feather uh, right down on this both sides. So um, I kind of like the positioning. I think that this will be a really good piece to be able to create my own design on. So we'll just wait and see. I don't have to glue it until the end, so if I want to make any changes, I can. This is the primer I'm going to use. It's Zinzar. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's a indoor-outdoor water-based primer. And I love it. Dries quickly. Dries in an hour, so I can recoat. It's great to apply the acrylics onto bigger materials I'd Give it a little, uh, use a roller. Right now this is just wonderful. See how I'm just zigzagging that out. This is 
pretty thick primer. So one coat is plenty on this. This will make the fabric a little stiffer. I want that for this, uh, this pretty thin uh, canvas, so I'll stiffen it up just a little bit. And I'm going to let this dry. And then we're going to go on to a different project. When this is dry, I'm going to start on the top coat and do the design. The new medicine wheel. Just going back to the bag here for a second. I'm going to unzip it. And the edging, now that it was glued, it's amazing. So all the fabric doesn't come off and uh, that fixed that problem. And then as you can see inside the bag here, we have our glued in and the back is glued on tight. Uh, this just kind of folds forward so you can actually undo these and pull this out. It's so awesome. So you can get at the bag, but yet you can know that it's not going to bounce around if you have your cell phone in there and you have more room to be able to actually put other items. Zip it back up and we're ready to uh, as soon as I can find the, the zipper, and we're ready to go. So this is awesome. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and paint this handle. I took a little bit of... It's funny when uh, you get different brands for colors, how what uh, one person might call a, call a violet, uh, or one paint company, uh, is completely different. Um, this color here, I'm just basically adding white to it. It is called violet. Um, and I imagine their colors change over time too. I don't know how old this container is. Uh, but anyhow, we added uh, white to the violet and um, I am adding just a little bit of, I'm going to be adding, I've got some textile medium there because I'm going to be using the same color for the highlighting on the shirt. So I'll add the textile medium in it in a minute. But right now I'm just going to go ahead and give a little bit of this on top of the can see how that's changing the color. Oh, I like that for the handle. It really pop, makes it pop. And second coat is wonderful. It'll tone down just a little bit when it dries, but it's just amazing. Uh, thank you very much for those who gave us ideas on a different colored handle. It really does make a difference. I add quite a bit of textile medium into this paint to really thin it out. Kind of makes it feel like it's watered down. So I can uh, spread it a lot thinner. And I'm using a fan brush because I can get into bigger areas with it. So once again I want to kind of make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. And I want to see if I can get this on real thin, just by kind of poking at it. I love the rule, there's no such thing as a mistake. Everything in life can be changed, so I find that getting into the arts is just such a great way to be able to de-stress some people will tell you that they get more stressed by doing the arts. And when I did these surveys, when I worked in schools with kids, I would create these surveys for them. And, and some of them really did get stressed because they thought that they had to make a line straight in order to be good at what they're doing. And that there was, they had to make everything exact. And once they realized they didn't, and that they, the most important part was for them just have fun just for them to have fun. And when they had fun, then all of a sudden everything became easier for them. And they got better at making straight lines, if they wanted a straight line. But fun was the beginning point for, for all learning. To me, I still think it is, but that's just me. One more coat on the ruffle. 
See, I like even the two-tone. I'll just flip it over. I don't worry about too much detail. You can. It's really up to you on what your personal preference is. Let that dry. I think I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to wait and see what Heather thinks. She'll try it on and we'll go from there. Remember, you can always adjust it. You can get an idea and then just do another little simple five minute layer and get the look you want. This is totally washable, which is great. Even if you can't heat set easily the uh, these uh, ruffles because of their inconsistency, just still put a, a, a sheet over it and iron it after a couple days and it'll heat set it and that'll be good enough. This type of paint it uh, usually holds up fairly well in, in with many washes so it's awesome. Are you having fun yet? I hope you are. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, Heather's uh, actually working right this minute. Uh, when she gets home we're going to go right back to upcycling working on some projects and showing you some new ideas and maybe you guys will uh, hopefully share some of your ideas on how we can uh, inspire us and how we can uh, do something a little bit uh, more unique uh, add a little more flavor a little more collaborative cooperative flavor anyhow I got something really exciting that I wanted to show you guys I don't think I've ever shown you before this was created by uh, many children it's called the story clock what they did is they needed a color wheel to be able to remember colors. Some of them had a difficult time remembering the color wheel. So they actually painted a color wheel, kind of like a, a chart, so they could always relate to how to get their colors, how to make them. But then what happened is they ended up creating this uh, clock. They, they created these characters, Wombat 1, Toucan 2, 3 the Snail, Foxy 4, Beehive 5, 6 Chicks, Seven the snake, primate eight, feline nine, ten the hen, eleven the walrus, and twelve the cow. And then they have zero the turtle in the middle. And so what they did is they created a, a book and uh, kids could add their own unique page to the book. So these were uh, fifth, sixth graders. It says the story clock has 13 characters who go on adventures together. Create your own page for this book. Try to have the drawing give an answer to a math question. We, didn't, we wanted them to just to be free thinking and come up with what they thought that meant to them. So this is, this is one of the uh, children. Seven the snake and three the snail were having a picnic. Along came ten the hen enjoyed them <laughs> I love that it's just uh, so these kids that were creating these pages they were from first grade on and it was uh, it was just really intriguing to see what they would come up with but how they could actually solve a math problem by simply using these characters and just a little bit different Toucan 2 gave two pies to Foxy 4 Feline 9 and 3 the snail each gave 6 straw strawberries to 12 the cow. To me this is everything for kids to be able to have this opportunity to process information the way they see it and, and be able to find their own unique way to be able to understand math and tie it in with reading and writing and just having fun. This was, it's just so so much fun. I'm just so amazed. <laughs> and this book is thick. I mean, it's just amazing the amount of pages to it. Anyhow, I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was kind of a unique thing to just creating can uh, be so much fun. You might not have a gadget like this, but if you don't, all you have to do is just take a find your middle put a pencil and with a string on it and you can take a pencil that the strings tied to and you can literally go around in a circle I'm just going to try to make the biggest circle I can here 
using up the most amount of space. Probably see that a little bit. I think I'm going to actually do a outer rim. Somebody gave me this device. So I'm just mixing in a little bit of red with the textile medium. I'm just going to go ahead and put this on. I'm putting the top coats on the fabric right now on the canvas. These uh, colors all, they represent, uh, yellow represents fire, believe it or not. Red represents earth. White represents air. And blue water. And the center, which I do have painted white right now, I'm going to take the yellow, the red, and the blue and mix it together. And I call it the fourth primary color, which is a chocolate brown. There's a couple of reasons why I call it the fourth primary color. Because when you're making colors, when you're learning the color wheel and you're actually learning to make colors, there's a simple method. And blue and brown are key components because anytime you have a color, you need to decide whether you want the color to be bright or dull that simple and when you're making that deciding factor it'll depend whether you're going to make your gray to add into it with blue and brown mixed together or just brown and just brown is added to gray in the color if it's considered what they call a warm color so reds yellows and oranges and you just add brown into it and then you could add your white to lighten and that would make your your gray but when you're when you're using all other colors to dullen mainly your cool colors you're using two parts brown one part blue to make gray this is kind of the science behind this is a little bit of the confusing part with colors but once you do it and you learn this method you can basically get your four degree, four year degree in visual arts as far as colors are, un, are understood you can get your degree in a day so it's a, it's a wonderful thing so I'm going to take uh, a little bit of yellow I'm going to stay away from the white and a little bit of red I'm going to make an orange and then I'm going to add some blue in but not too much blue you can see probably there how much blue I have in my brush and this is going to give me a really dark brown, okay? So let's just see what that looks like on here, okay? Can you see how dark that is? Now I'm not exact with my color, and this, this is already painted white and it's still wet on, on the canvas. So it's kind of mixing in, so it's getting a little bit lighter, the brown. I'm going to do two coats on here anyhow. But I just kind of wanted to show you how dark of a color that would be. And actually, if you get the right percentages of yellow, red, and blue together, you'll get a chocolate brown, a dark brown, much darker than this. Just making sure you don't get any white mixed into it, otherwise it starts becoming lighter. Why I'm doing brown in the middle? Well, the middle represents home. And it's the center of everything. So what home means? Uh, well, I'm going to describe that in words on top of all of this. On this medicine wheel. So I think I'm going to, uh, I like this, the way it's looking. I'm going to take the outer edge and I'm going to make a yellow ochre. Which is a little bit different than what's on the jacket. That's more of a raw sienna. And I just want, I want this... Uh, this wheel to be able to not stand out too much the, the outer rim. So I changed the shape of this. I curved the edges and I tried to match the background, the color around the wheel. 
And here's all the details that I have on the, the lettering. And I just did that in silver to make it stand out. And I'm going to put some books on it. I, got, I have the glue all around the edges and I'm going to just let that dry and and then we'll try it on. And uh, this is a vintage, I don't actually know if it's vintage, I shouldn't say that. It's thrifted skirt that I just loved. I love the, the patterns on it. It looks like a quilt with all these famous singers, Elvis, Marilyn Monroe, and I think Jimi Hendrix and Bob Marley. Yeah. And I just took... Um, I tried to find a pair of uh, jeans that I wanted to upcycle that kind of matched the color of the top uh, part of the skirt because I wanted to make the length a bit longer. It, uh, it was just kind of hitting me at a funny place. It was just kind of around the knees. I just didn't like the look of it on me. And I also had to take it in a bit. So this was kind of a good way to accomplish both, uh, bringing it down longer and and having it fit me. So it's kind of a drop waist look now. I just have a couple areas more to stitch in. I can't wait to see this uh, styled up, Heather. Yeah, yeah it's, that's, it's really kind of fun. Yeah. That's so unusual to find. Yeah, I thought it was really unusual. I couldn't leave that one behind. <laughs> they feel really good, Dave. Like, really good. They kind of felt good before, even when the strap was loose. They actually stayed on pretty well. Uh, but now, they yeah. really feel great. Yeah. You know, that, that just tightened everything up. Isn't that I amazing? I just threw them on with stockings because I, my nails aren't painted, but I don't like to look at my toes with the nail polish. <laughs> so this was originally orange, the ver vermilion uh, on the bottom. Yes, and it was that color. Yeah, and it's kind the of red. The top so was kind of a yucky. tan, very light tan. It didn't appeal to me with the orange. I love this hot pink with the orange. Yeah, it's amazing how you can just take a, a I think they're a few dollars, the shoes, right? Uh, five, oh, yeah, I, I don't think they were much. Five I can't dollars. Really remember now, although maybe the price is still on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, just to be able to take uh, uh, something for five dollars and be able to paint the the uh, top half of it and really make it something. It costs nothing to be able to, well, outside of the glue, to be able to actually pull the straps in and tighten them up. And actually, I imagine, It's funny because I, I have a pink dress. And I haven't had anything really to wear with them. Um, I had the coral colored shoes that you had painted, but they're uh, not quite the right color with the pink dress. And this is going to go perfectly, these shoes. I'll have to style them up next uh, next style up video. These are the uh, flowers that I was just kind of painting. They were brighter pink and purple, or uh, blue and purple. This one, I, lo I love it actually as is, and I think I'll just keep it the way it is. This one, I might kind of change up a little bit. I might add a little more silver. And then I think I'm going to add some clip-on earrings that I had thrifted into the middle. They're beaded. Oh, just to give neat. it just a little more yeah. pizzazz. And where do you think you'll wear those? Like just anywhere, on, on what, depending on what you're styling up. Well, yeah. In fact, I have like this dress here. You can kind of see the color. Oh, I love and that. I thought on the top of the slip dress, yeah, just as just a little additional, you know, sparkle. So Dave changed the uh, color of this, the handle on this bag to kind of pick up the flowers, and I really love it. It's a little more of a, I guess, vermilion. Yeah, actually, I changed it um, uh, once again. I had it more of a pink, but I, I think that even though there is a little bit of the pinks down here too, I see a little more of the vermilion. So. Um, that's what uh, I am excited to to uh, to style this up. Isn't that nice? I like how it turned out. I'm just going to sew the collar down on the inside there because I didn't really like the collar anymore. Do you like it now? But I love it. Yeah, I really do. I like it. I love being able to put my own little stamp on the logo in the back. Be able to create my. Uh, what I think that this uh, this medicine wheel means to me and. Uh, a little bit closer there you might be able to see it in detail i could do some adjustments to it later but right now i think i'm pretty happy a lot of fun i love wearing something that has a has a great deal of meaning to it when you find something that's got a lot of uh, history behind it 